Namaskar, good evening, Honorable Sir, on behalf of the Education Promotion Society for India and Quackerelli Simons, QS, popularly known, an international ranking agency for universities all over the world, we have come here to present you the rankings for 2018. It's a great privilege for us to present the rankings to you. EPSI has been in a higher education since 2005. Before we proceed further, I would like to introduce the members of this delegation, starting with, from my right side, Dr. G. Viswanathan, the president of EPSI, who has been member of Lok Sabha twice, and also MLA and minister in Tamil Nadu. Myself, Dr. Harivans Chaturvedi, director of the Institute of Management. My left side, uh, Mr. Aswini Fernandez, who is the uh, CEO for Asia QS, then uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Prashant Bhalla, Chancellor Manav Rachna University, uh, Dr. Ashok Mittal, Chancellor Lovely Professional University, Jalandhar, then Dr. Aditya Sastri, Chancellor Banasthali University, Rajasthan, our Executive Secretary, Mr. Palaniwel, our friend from Amritsar, Mr. Goel, and Mr. Siddharth, who is working for EPSI, and our other staff members. I will request our President, Dr. G. Viswanathan, to welcome formally uh, Honorable Sir and also briefly introduce the EPSI. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as uh, President of EPSI, it is my pleasure and privilege to welcome His Excellency the President of India to this important function. APSI is a national level organization for education in the country, functioning from 2005 onwards. We have more than 300 universities and 3,000 colleges as members. And uh, we have been holding regularly conferences and seminars in higher education. In fact, at the end of the first year itself, we were able to get the President of India, the then President, Dr. Abdul Kalam, for our conference in 2006. Um, we are interested as a nation in improving the gross enrollment ratio. At present, it's only 24%. According to 2011 census, out of 14 crores of children, who are eligible for higher education, only three and a half crore children are getting the benefit of higher education. So it is our desire to improve the GER, and uh, we would request His Excellency to see that there should be a national level scholarship scheme policy for the entire country. And also, we want the quality of higher education to improve. Of course, the EPSA is also trying to do its bit, but um, it, it depends on the policies of both the central government as well as state governments. One of the main reasons is lack of funding and lack of autonomy. These are important things which we'll have to consider for improving the quality of education in our in universities and colleges. India can become a global hub for higher education. So far, it has not happened because the total number of students studying from one country to another, what they call international students, is around 50 lakhs in the world. And we are unable to attract even 1% of the international students. That is why EPSA has started a project called Study in India and we want to sell our education outside, tell them what kind of quality education we can offer, and bring more foreign students. Apart from our own students, we would like to get more foreign students, especially from the developing countries. And um, we, we are trying to improve the quality of education by going in for uh, teachers' um, uh, education, that is uh, quality improvement among the teachers, and management education, etc. And I'm happy 
that the President has accepted invitation to be here today. And uh, on behalf of EPSI and behalf of um, QS World Ranking, we thank the President and I take this opportunity to welcome the President of India. Thank you. Honorable Sir, uh, on behalf of the 350-odd universities which are member of the EPSI and 3,000 plus colleges which are associated with this august body, we would like to express our gratitude to you. You have been the one of the President of Indian Republic who has given utmost importance to the issues and challenges before higher education as the Chancellor of Central Universities and as the, the, the head of Indian Republic, you have highlighted all the big issues and challenges and attracted the attention of the policy makers and the education service providers. On this occasion, we are very much excited. As a great sense of gratitude, we would like to present you a Kanjivaram uh, shawl to you and two books on behalf of the delegation. Transforming Higher Education, it is published by EPSI, edited by me. The other book is QS Showcase 2017. This is QS Showcase 2017. Thank you. Sir, you may be aware about uh, the global scenario in higher education and uh, the UNESCO data that there are 25,000 universities in the world. And there are three big agencies ranking the universities, along with Times Higher Education and SJTU ranking. QS ranking has its own eminence. It came into existence in 1989, and uh, this is the 14th, 14th edition of this ranking. Uh, 4,000 universities participated in this ranking, and 1,000 universities ha have been ranked. We are very happy that today uh, we are going to present to you, uh, and Mr. Aswini Fernandez will be making a brief presentation, and it's a matter of great pride that 20 universities have been included in the ranking for 2018. Mr. Aswini Fernandez. Honorable President, dignitaries, ladies and gentlemen, representing QS here today, I can say that I'm very happy because what we have achieved in the 2018 edition of the QS World University Rankings is immense happiness over having three top universities in the top 200. So, Honorable President, I would like to share with you a little bit about the rankings and also about QS. We are an organization which was formed in the college dorm while the founder was still studying at the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, from there on, from 1989, we have been provi providing students with information that can make life-changing decisions. And this is what separates QS from all the other ranking agencies. QS has a very strong community commitment. We fund postgraduate studies of students in deserving countries. Uh, in 2014 alone, we funded 1.3 million US dollars, which were received through different channels at QS. Who is our audience? Honorable President, it, are, it is students, and all our rankings are provided and are compiled in a way that students can understand them. But at the same time, while we reach out to students, we have honorable people like you who have keen interest in the country. We have academics, university leaders, we have scholarship providers, and so on. The ranking methodology which we apply for the world ranking is simple, is consistent, and is discipline independent. And I can proudly say that it has low dependence on self-reporting. The results which were out and released yesterday showed top universities not only from the West, but also from Asia. We had two universities in the top 15 which were from Asia, from Singapore, and that is Nanyang Technological University and National University of Singapore. And this is the first time we have had universities from Asia which are young and contemporary in the top 15. At the same time, we had India's rising stars. And I can proudly say that 
a total number of 20 universities from India were ranked. And your dream, Honorable President, was to have universities in the top 200. We have achieved that by having three of uh, India's top universities in the top 200 of the world. This ranking has got the first ever in any ranking. We have had 20 universities ranked for the very first time since the 14 years QS has been producing the rankings. Over six new entries this year. A groundbreaking achievement. Two private universities were in this ranking. And this is again for the very first time. One of the facts that a lot of people in the world don't know and we would like to publicize it is that IISC Bangalore was ranked sixth globally for citations per faculty. And that is even ahead than MIT and Harvard. Ranked Indian universities are considered to be in the top 3% globally, and that's a great achievement for India. Some insights for India. The rise in the ranked universities in this edition compared to the previous edition shows that our system in India here is able to cater to the increasing population of young, talented individuals. The IITs are gradually, while in some of them are increasing, there is a matter of concern for them that a few of them are, are decreasing and the positions have been a little bit bad than previous years. India can point with pride to the improvement that its institutions have made and both in research intensive, intensivity and impact. For the first time as private universities have made a foray into the ranking, they require to be provided with support and level playing field and we hope that the government and the country can support them. And finally, India is one, one of the countries which really needs a boost of international participation of students. So this is something a body like EPSI can work with the government to do this. So with this, Honorable President, I would like to congratulate you and I would like to present you with something to signify this very important historic moment in India with 20 universities which are ranked. Thank you, Ashwini. Honorable Sir, we are here to listen you take your guidance because you have seen Indian higher education evolving from a very humble from a very humble background when India became independent. Private sector is playing very important role and more than 80 percent institutions and more than 70 percent students and institutions are being provided by private sector universities and colleges. On behalf of the member institutions, on behalf of the EPSI, we look forward to, towards you for your sagacious advice how Indian higher education should grow in the next few decades so that it can compete with global university. So a request to Honorable President to address us about the future path of Indian higher education. We have the frame and before that, I have made a mistake. We would like to present mm -hmm. a plaque in which the QS ranking Indian entry has been depicted. Can we have a big applaud for this occasion? Good afternoon, Dr. Vishwanathan, President, EPSI, and Founder and Chancellor of VIT University, <coughs> Dr. H. Chaturvedi, Alternate President, EPSI, and Director, Bidla Institute of Management Technology, Dr. Prashant Bhalla, Treasurer, EPSI, and President, Manov Research Educational Institutions, Sri Ashok Mittal, Chancellor Lovely Professional University, 
Professor Aditya Shastri, Vice Chancellor Banastalu Vidyapit, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It's indeed a very happy occasion for me to have this engagement with you. Many of you are quite known faces to me, and I have visited the institutions which you represent, including the universities founded by Dr. Vishwanathan, who was my colleague in Parliament. I had the privilege of visiting Banasthali Institute. Very recently, I visited lovely professional university where Ashok Mittal is doing well. And this is one area which always wondered me that how is it? And the occasion arose I, after becoming president, when I found that I am the visitor of about 114 to 116 central university institutions, 45 of which are central universities, 30 NITs, 16 IITs, and scores of other institutions and it requires a lot of attention to have these institutions in its proper form and standard. In my visit to Kharagpur IIT, sometimes in 2013, when I had the interaction, as I come from this state, I know most of the directors who served there, starting from Dr. Gan Ghosh, who was teacher in the 50s. And while having interaction with them, I asked the director, that what is your campus recruitment? He told me, rather, confirm my own information at 100 percent and if they could produce more, <laughs> they would have been absorbed. More could have been absorbed. Then my second question to him was, how they are placed now? He said, sir, almost every major international corporations, you will find at least three IIT graduates Kanpur, Delhi, and Kharagpur. Campus recruitment is highly satisfactory. Placement of running the big conglomerations is quite encouraging. Then I put the third question, how many of them have engaged themselves in basic research? The answer was not very satisfactory. Since then, I have taken several interactive sessions with the vice chancellors, directors of NITs, IITs, IIACRs, in the institutional mechanism of Vice Chancellor's Conference, visitors, interaction. And one point I tried to emphasize that I do not believe our standards are inferior to those institutions who are placed and ranked by the international reputed ranking agencies among the top 200. But why we are not finding a place there? And perhaps the reason was, 
and which was confirmed later on, that we do not take very seriously these rankings and we are not very interested. With a little bit more proactive action and responding to the format and information required by them would have brought many of our institutions within the recognition limit. And it has started as you are good enough, I am grateful to all of you for informing us, not only informing in the form of a printed memorandum you have given me the ranking of those institutions in 2018. The two major international rating agencies, including Times Education Institutions, now this year, three of Indian institutions have found place within 200. Delhi IIT, Bombay IIT, and Bangalore Institute of Science. And I have no doubt that many others will also come very soon. What happened to my mind, and it has merit also, particularly during the 12th five-year plan, when educational outlay was increased substantially, we had huge infrastructure development and physical expansions of the universities. As you are aware, right now we are having 760 universities, 38,500 colleges. But with the expansion of physical availability of seats and access, to the seats of higher education, quality improvement did not take place. And it happens, plan after plan we found when we are under the, during the planned economic development era, from first plan to twelfth plan, there was no exception to the fact that we have resources to create assets, but we don't provide resources to utilize the assets which we have established and for its proper maintenance. That was one of the major deficiency which we noticed in the government funded and government established institutions. And it is no exception in one plan period, every plan period, because Somehow the economists thought it proper that new investment will be planned expenditure, but investment for the maintenance will be non-planned expenditure, and as per the distribution, that will be the responsibility of the state governments, and central assistance will be available for creating the new assets. Even it went to such a ridiculous position, once I happened to be the head of the planning commissions as deputy chairman planning commission and the eighth five-year plan was drafted by me between 91 and 96. I received complaint from some of the very top technical institutions that said we don't have any money, any resources to buy even the journals. And then here, how do you Manage, how do you get the information? So we made a special provision and one time grant of 500 crores were allocated to different institutions on demand. The short point which I'm trying to drive at and which has been pointed out very correctly, that two basic deficiencies which you are finding absence of qualified teachers and resources which are required not only to maintain 
but to upgrade the assets which have been created. I am happy that the private sector has come forward. And when they have come forward, there has been a remarkable changes. <coughs> Mr. Mittal is present here. I very recently I visited his university. It is one of the beautiful campus I found. And not all 29 states of India, but a large number of foreign countries are represented in the form of students and also in the form of faculties. So our institutions will have to create the capacity to attract the students and also the faculties, as it happened. Of course, those are the stories of the glorious past. Almost 1800 years, we had the leading role in the arena of higher education. Indian institutions like Takshashila or Nalanda attracted the mighty minds like magnet. Takshashila became the melting pot of civilizational courses. Four civilizations confluenced at that point of time Iranian, Greek, Chinese, Indian. So all this continued in some of the top class institutions and naturally the other institutions also had very high standard. Now coming to the presence, I would also like to encourage the private sector and also the government institutions to have close interaction with the industry. Wherever we have been able to encourage the head of the institutions and persuade the state governments to have deeper interface with industries and the academies, to link it up with the grassroots level innovations, importance on innovation, basic research has increased, and the organizations like Inspired Teachers Club, then Interface Hub, Local Hub, universities became the local hub of local innovations and then encourage the talented people even in, in their own way, thousands of people in their everyday life, innovate something to solve their own problems, which they face in their day-to-day -day life. And what we tried to do, and which has been done by many central universities, and it has been done by private sector universities, that they have encouraged and created this half. This ambient has been created, and which has generated the momentum, which is being taken it off by the leading institutions, which is quite encouraging. I don't think mere ranking is important. Ranking is important from the point of view that it creates some motivation. It creates that my merit, my excellence is being recognized not only by my people in our locality but also internationally. And that also brings the name of the institution which provides an opportunity to have teachers, students, exchange of academic programs, seminars, all these things which are part of the academic curricula could be encouraged and could be done. And I noticed another thing. During my presidency, I Almost every visit I took, vice chancellors of different universities or directors 
of IITs or NITs to accompany me. So that those three, four days, they could have interaction with their counterparts and it was organized. And large number of MOUs and others, instrumental mechanisms were established. And these are providing good opportunities to us. I am deeply thankful to you for organizing this program and for releasing the 2018 edition of QS World University Ranking. This is quite encouraging and the initiatives which you have taken, I wish Godspeed and all success. Mr. Vishwanathan, as I mentioned, is my old friend and once jokingly I told him that, look, your total engagement with education is a loss to parliamentary politics. He was a good parliamentarian, but I'm happy that it is much more social beneficial because you have en <coughs> engaged your energies, merit and efforts, dynamism in the field of higher education, which is quite encouraging. I congratulate all of you. I wish you Godspeed and all success. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. So on behalf of EPSI and its strong membership of around 350 plus universities and 3,000 plus institutions in the country, I'd like to express my gratitude and thanks to His Excellency, the Honorable President of India, for giving us this solemn opportunity of appraising His Highness about the role of EPSI at national and international level by effectively taking forward the mandate of universities and educational institutions since 2005. We have heard a lot about EPSI and its activities. Our president has already mentioned. So uh, just a few things regarding internationalization. Uh, one point that our president mentioned regarding the Study in India initiative, that is a drive that EPSI has really taken on its own. And we are really very keen that how we can work for the country and ensure that m many more students should come to our country and that numbers should increase as we grow. So QS rankings that we got uh, released today, they have been an established benchmark of quality institutions in the world. And we've all discussed the 20 institutions who have found place in the rankings. I think it is a great recognition of Indian education system. And my, uh, on behalf of UPSI, our congratulations to the universities who have made it here. And in the end, I would again like to express our profuse thanks and gratitude to His Excellency, the President of India, for giving EPSI and QS an opportunity to place on record the efforts initiated for futuristic development of Indian higher education, keeping in view global challenges and needs. Thank you, sir.